What's up everybody in Driver Studio Land. Today I wanted to talk to you about how to make more money off your car you have for sale. Of course, I'm gonna be biased and I'm gonna say right off the rip, sell on my site. Go to driverstudio.com, put your car up on there. But I'm not just necessarily biased because it's my site. I actually went super ghetto old school and wrote some stuff down because I've been thinking about this for a while. So I'm gonna hit some bullet points today. I'm gonna to tell you why it's best to come over and give us a shot. So without further ado, I'm gonna break it down. First things first, a lot of people don't realize that the online automotive sales industry, it's a $21 billion a year business. It's crazy how much money's out there. All you need to do to become successful to buy and sell cars is to just get a little sliver of that pie. That being said, there's a gazillion ways anybody could go out there and buy and sell cars and make a decent living. In a previous video, I talked about somebody telling me websites are dead. I've actually heard that from a family member who does a lot of stuff online, surprisingly. But back to that guy who said that, when he made that comment, he also said, oh, marketplace is where it's at. And I said to him, well, your car's been up for sale for 31 days. Now that, of course, you could have your vehicle up for sale for a bunch of days on any website for sure. It, it all depends on who's looking on what day, if they have the right amount of money, if the color of the vehicle's right. There's a whole bunch of reasons why someone may or may not buy your specific car. However, there are things that a lot of people who, from what we've found, once every four and a half to five years, buy and sell a car for the average person. Maybe you're not your average like me and you buy and sell cars quite more often than that. But, so back to this. So what we have found is there's a multitude of things that people really are starting to despise. I'm sure everybody's heard the term Craigslist flakes. I know people are frustrated about off up so on and so forth. But these are some of the crazy things that I've had happen to me personally recently, including yesterday. This one blew my mind. I've never had this happen. I just made an ad for some parts just within the last 48 hours from today, Wednesday, April 15th. I made an ad and I actually got an email through my Craigslist ad and someone said, how did they put it? They don't text message, they don't call or anything like that, which of course to me that's a big red flag. But they wanted me to email them back at a different email address. Well, of course, if you're not savvy to these kinds of scams, you very easily could just reply to that person. Well, boom, now they've got your personal email. And that's, of course, one of the things that are fished for. So just one little new thing before I you know, forget because I didn't write that down. But some of my top things that are super, super frustrated. Here we go. Number one, OfferUp deleted one of my ads the other day for inappropriate content. They don't give you a reason why they think it's inappropriate content. I have no idea why my ad got deleted. I didn't put anything inappropriate. I didn't put any kind of profanity, any kind of innuendos. I don't even really joke around in my ads or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure why they removed it for inappropriate content. Number two, this frustrates me to no end. I get hit up through OfferUp in a marketplace all the time. And guys will say, of course, mind you, it does say at the top where I'm from and where my vehicle's listed from. But I get messaged and people will say, oh, where are you located? And I'll say my, my neighborhood or, you know, my city or something like that. And they'll say, what state is that in? I'll say Washington State. And then they always follow back with, oh, man, I'm, I'm in Oklahoma or, or, you know, I'm in New Mexico or I'm in Virginia. I'm thinking, what? And they just say, I didn't realize it just popped up my feet. Now, that's no knock against them. But for me, it's more like, why, why are things coming up? in my offer up feed or my Facebook marketplace feed that aren't even in my state. That's not anywhere near my zip code. So that's crazy. So here's another thing. A guy made an offer the other day. When I responded, he accidentally messaged me. Or I should say when I responded to him after he messaged me and asked me if my car was still available, I responded back to him and he said, Oh, sorry, bro. I was scrolling and I accidentally asked you if it was still available. That's how easy it is. What that, a lot of people don't understand that, that, you know, for instance, I pitched the other day an idea to a friend and I said, hey, check this out. What if I told you I had a website that was fantastic website because of the things that we were capable of doing? One being, hey, check this out. We just remodeled our kitchen. Let me show you these pictures of this. In this great, I made more space. I got granite countertops, blah, blah, blah. I don't, maybe one day that'd be fantastic. My kitchen is very, very basic. I live in a manufacturing home. I love it, but yeah, still, I don't have granite countertops. 
But anyways, you take pictures of all these great things in your kitchen and you think, I want to show this to the world, right? You're very proud of that. Likewise, you say, oh, here's some pictures that you're scrolling through. This is my daughter's ballet recital. Wasn't Little Miss Princess fantastic? Look at how she plied or whatever it's called, right? That's fantastic. That's great. And then you scroll a little bit further. And what do you see? You see your grandma with a Yorkshire Terrier running around in the front yard. And you're like, oh, yay, I'm in quarantine. Here's my dog. Aren't I having a great time? And what do you do? You scroll next. And you're like, oh, cool. A 59 Impala Vert for $100,000. This is Instagram. I'm sorry, but I'm just pointing this out to the average person who looks at this. You know, it, it still blows my mind that I do have friends that say, oh, I don't even use Instagram. But this is my Instagram feed. I see these kinds of things. Yes, I do like remodeling. My grandma really does have a Yorkshire Terrier. And, you know, I wish I could remodel my kitchen. But what I'm saying is this is the kind of stuff where I'm thinking, really, you're going to tell me that websites are dead, but yet Marketplace or IG or OfferUp, that's the way to sell your vehicle. Yet I can tell you problems, and I'm sure you can relate to this and tell me problems that people have on a day-to-day -day basis with this kind of stuff. I just want to create a website or have a website which, you know, has been created. Check us out, driverstudio.com where it's real car people buying and selling cars like this. Maybe one day I'll get the story about when my buddy Tyler got this car 15 years ago, the one that we were getting ready for good guys. So check me out, I'll have a new video on YouTube about this here soon, a couple days out from shooting this insane primer. Keep our fingers crossed, it looks amazing. Anyways, another thing, here we go. Why can't I see the comments from someone who's direct messaging someone else with their ad posting? That frustrates me to no end. If I want to go onto a a site, a form, or whatever, why is it that I can't read all the messages? There shouldn't be an opportunity for somebody to quote unquote DM or private message or something to say, hey, where are you located? What's the price? What's been done to the motor? I feel like the seller is hiding their information about the vehicle when they say that. I'm sure you guys have heard some of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of people who do this kind of stuff, especially on Instagram, right? I just, and I guess when you think about offer up in Facebook Marketplace, if I'm questioning someone, something that's pertinent to their specific vehicle, why can't the general masses see what's already been asked? That's a great way for the consumer, the average person who's looking at that same car, who's not necessarily comfortable with messaging that person selling a vehicle, why can't they see what's already been asked and learn from the comment section, you know, like when you're surfing Facebook regularly, why can't that be like that all the time? In ours, of course, we have a comment section, you throw comments down, ask whatever question, and it's gonna send them an alert automatically. I know there's some similar things like that, but I think you guys get the idea. Which leads me to this, which probably my number one pet peeve, is why is it when you're on Instagram, you see all these people, hundreds of thousands of followers, killer cars, I love seeing it, super banging Impalas, Tri-5 Chevys, first, second gen Camaros, Novas, C10s, this is obviously the kind of stuff that I'm into, but it really frustrates me when I see someone selling something like that. And of course I'll say, hey, where are you located or what's the price? Because they kind of bait and they don't necessarily say, and then they'll say, oh, DM me. I got no problem DMing you, private messaging you. That's totally fine. What frustrates me is when I do that and they say, this is that person's, the, their IG account or their Craigslist ad or their Facebook, whatever it is. So you mean to tell me it's not your vehicle that you're selling, right? I don't have a problem if someone posts an ad that they, they make an ad with a vehicle or auto parts that isn't theirs. But what frustrates me is when someone portrays that it's their vehicle and they say, bring me 60 grand. And then I'm kind of made like to feel like a fool when I ask a question, because like, man, I already said DM me for questions. Why do I have to DM you? Why can't you answer this question right out in the open? Well, it's because they don't want the average person to know. Now, I'm not gonna say this person's name, uh, not that person, if you guys know car stuff on IG, you probably know what I'm talking about with that one. But the next person, great, great, great guy. You know what, I'll just name drop. It's Cali Trader, Cali Boy, right? Love this guy, I love his content, I love the stuff that he does. Now, me personally, I think that as time goes on, he's probably gonna bow out from selling cars online, only because he's becoming super successful on YouTube. I'm not really trying to become super successful on YouTube. I'm trying to get my website to grow and this is a great way to, you know, kind of funnel people from YouTube onto my website to help them buy and sell cars and car parts. But I'm just saying, if you put all your eggs in one basket, you know, no pun to Easter that we just had. Um, I'm just saying if, if you do that, 
and someone starts to blow up and then they leave the scene, you're like, okay, now what do I sell through, right? And you haven't really vetted anybody else that's a great avenue to sell your car through. You know, and, and I'd also like to touch on the fact that the biggest auto sales places out there online, it's not, you know, IG or OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace. Those definitely generate some good numbers, but people don't realize it's still True Car, Carvana, Car Gurus, Bring a Trailer, eBay, big dog players out there. These guys are holding the major market share. I'm talking 25%, 20%, 15%, crazy, crazy, crazy amount where these other things where people are like, oh, this is the only way to sell my vehicle. They're just selling with a tiny little sliver. So really when you think about it, you're not really reaching out to the masses. Google has implemented some recent rules in regards to original content, original media and stuff like that, which is kind of curbing these, these big dog players in the online automotive sales world, just because they're having similar content funneled to them from dealerships and so on and so forth. Obviously we don't sell a dealership cars. We are just people who help promote average person, average Joe cars, you know, and that's what we really want to focus on. So once again, this is why I think we're the best place to come to, to help you make more money, get more money in your pocket, save more money, especially in a time like this, where we're having this crazy crisis with coronavirus, COVID-19. You know, everybody wants to make as much money as they can and keep as much money as they can in their pocket. Heaven forbid you gotta sell your classic, your project car, or your everyday driving, you gotta start riding the bus. You know, I work with transit, so I see this kind of stuff happening. But we're just trying to make a new online automotive sales platform where people can get the best bang for their buck. And at the same time, through our YouTube channel, educate people as to what they're not really seeing about these other places that are so great to be able to sell their, their vehicles. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I appreciate your time. You know where I'm at. Check me out on YouTube. Like, follow, subscribe. And of course, hit me up online, driverstudio.com. That's D-R-I-V-E-R-S-S-T-U-D-I-O.com, Driver Studio. We love you guys. Hope everybody's staying safe and healthy. We'll see you all next time. Driver Studio, out.